Hey everybody, this is Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Today is Tuesday, February 12th, and this is Floss Tube number 36. And I have several fully finished objects to show you guys. Not a ton of whips, but a few. And um when I talk about some plans, what I want to what I want to stitch next. So, um Where should we start? Where should we start? Why don't we start with um, haul, which I have a little, just a, just a little. Well, first I want a giveaway. So this I didn't buy. I won this giveaway from Lori, Once Upon a Stitch. It is a Jardin Privé chart. It's called Marquette, Marquise, Marquise. I've always loved this chart. I've had it saved on my one, two, three stitch wish list, And, um, I've wanted it for a while and she finished it and was like, Hey, if you know, I'll do a giveaway. If you want the chart, you know, comment, I can't remember what we had to comment, but we had to comment something. And, um, and then she contacted me and was like, Hey, you won the chart. So that was super exciting. I actually, um, I think I, I've kitted it up. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to start it, but let, I want to show you guys like what I picked because it's, it's a little, it, well, it's not a little, it's a lot different than what's on the, the image on the front. So, which is on, stitched on a smoky white Edinburgh linen. I picked this linen from Exju Designs. Um, it is called Ash Rose and it's, um, like a dusty mauve, maybe it's a little purple, a little pink, a little brown and a little gray. Mm, it smells real good. I don't know how well that's showing up. I can't really see what's going on in my mirror over there, but it's a mauve. And so then I'm gonna, so the pattern calls for four colors. They're DMC. It's like light pink, medium pink, green, and brown. So for my brown, I picked this Exju Designs. It was like a freebie with the fabric of the month. It's, there's two flosses on here. I'm not using the blue. I need to just take that off. So that brown is called Mother Bear. And then for the green, I picked Color and Cotton Primitive Vines. So those are actually like not far off of what is on, like what's charted and what's on the pattern, right? Like the browns and greens. But then um, it calls for a light pink and a medium pink. And I got a little stuck there because the they wouldn't show up very well in this fabric. So I decided to go in a little bit of a different direction and I'm going to do more of like a purple. So this is another color in cotton called Red Rock. Why is it called Red Rock? I don't know because it's purple. And another color in cotton called Fortune Teller, which is from the Halloween box. And that one's a little bit more wild, but I just, I think these colors go, I love the green with the purple. I just, I don't know. I like it. So what do you guys think? Like, am I crazy? I think it's going to work. But tell me if, if I'm crazy. I guess I won't know till I start stitching it. But that's what I kitted up for that. And thank you, Lori, for the chart. I love it. Thank you. And she sent me a really very nice note. Well, a card with a very nice note. Um, okay, so then I had no haul until I decided I would go to the craft box. I've talked about this place before, but you know, you don't watch, all, you may not have watched all my videos. You may not know what I'm talking about. The craft box is, um, it's a store in, it's a suburb of Denver. It's it's technically in Wheat Ridge, but it's also, it's right by Lakeside Amusement Park. Um, it is 
a cons I guess it's a craft consignment store. Um, you can go, you can make an, an appointment and sell all your crafty stuff to them and then they resell it. So it's only craft stuff. So it's, it's so nice because it's like, it's like thrift store prices, but you don't have to go to a thrift store and wade through all the junk. Like they've already honed their collection. Um, so they have, like you walk in and there's a needlepoint and cross stitch section, there's a knitting section, a quilting section, a stamping and scrapbooking section, um, a mixed media kind of crafty section, and then like a whole fabric section, uh, beads, I mean every, like all, all of the hobbies we like. And so the prices are really, really cheap too. And I hadn't been in a while and I needed some fabric because I have started quilting, finally. And I didn't bring, I'll, I don't have much put together yet, so maybe next video I'll show you what I'm doing with quilting, but I have officially started a quilt. And I'm doing Christine Stitch All The Things um, quilt, quilting tutorial, so I'm doing the four patch. So I'm doing that but I'm also planning all these other quilts I want to do and I have a quilt. Oh, you know what? I have the pattern right here. So I'll show you. I got this on Etsy. It is the seller is Satomi S A T O M I Satomi quilts. And the pattern is called a little break and it is super cute. It's like little coffee mugs. Um, and it's beginner friendly. Like it's not too, intense for me and so I needed to go get some fabrics especially like some pinks for this quilt and um the craft box has like a, a ton of fabrics and they're like quilt shop quality really nice fabrics for like so cheap so I went down there to get fabrics but of course I got to look at the cross stitch stuff while I'm there um so I saw the owner Liz was there um they they recognize me i'm kind of i'm kind of famous in there no i'm just kidding but they do they actually do recognize me and they always are very friendly and and like greet me and um it's nice it's nice but um the reason they recognize me is because talking about the store on my videos um they've had some people come in and they asked, you know, how did you hear about us? And they were like, oh, I heard about you on Flosstube. So they were like, what? It, what? And went and saw me on Flosstube. So that's how they know who I am. Um, but anyway, I found some good, I, I found some cross stitch goodies. Um, I always find something there, always. Um, they do, they do get new inventory. I think like, I don't know how often, but like, it's gotta be pretty frequently. I'm sure like, really great stuff is put out and sells like immediately and I I never even know it was there but um every time I've gone there is new stuff there so I always find something so what I found this time first I found a piece of fabric and I don't know I don't know much about it it's not labeled it feels it feels like um, a witch elf. It's that it like it actually feels like a lamb's wool, but it's dyed. It's not lamb's wool. It's got a little bit of dye to it. Um, just a nice piece of fabric. It looks like maybe a 32 count, maybe 28 even. I'd have to get my gauge out and check. Um, but just a nice neutral little piece of fabric for you know a couple dollars. It might be someone might have dyed it themselves. It might be like a tea and coffee dyed. It feels like lamb's wool, but it's not the color of lamb's wool. So I'm wondering if someone took some lamb's wool and dyed it themselves. I'm not mad about it. So I got that little piece of fabric and then I found this little Mill Hill kit. Um, I want to do all these sleighs, but I've like restrained myself. Um, this is the Toyland sleigh and it's, it's not been, it's not like leftovers. It's like unopened brand new. So I got that. And then I got, um, 
the other thing I do sometimes when I'm there looking at patterns, sometimes I'm like, I'm waffling on one. I'm like, mm, I'm drawn to that, but I'm not sure if I really want to stitch that. Like, I'll just sit there sometimes and be like, eh. And then I'm like, you know what, just get it, it's a couple dollars. Like, just get it, if you don't stitch it, you don't stitch it. So this was one that I was like, I think I really like it, but, and I was like, you know what, it's $2. Just go ahead and get it. So this is Told in a Garden Amish Quilt Sampler, and what drew me to it was the quilts. So, and they had a lot of Told in, a garden it's really colorful it's really pretty and these um these quilts right here at the top were just really like I really like those so and maybe I won't ever do it I don't know but I got it and then this one I just thought was really pretty um they have a lot of patterns that I'm like, I've never heard of this designer. Now, granted, I don't know like everything about cross stitch. I haven't been cross stitching that, that long. And I'm sometimes like, you know, maybe like everybody else knows who this is and I don't, but some of the designers I'm like, I have never heard of that. But if I like the pattern, I'll, I'll get it. Um, this is by Samplers and Such. 2003 copyright samplers and such was based out of Warwick Rhode Island and this is called a spot of tea one and I just thought it was really pretty it was like a nice little Quaker design I love red work Quakers I I just do and then I got, oh, I thought this one was really fun. Um, this is by Needlework Press. It is from 2013, so it's not very old. And it is called Minerva Alif 1886. So I guess it's a sampler, it's an adaptation of Minerva's 1886 sampler. I love that her name is Minerva. I thought, I love like the kind of rainbow colors and it's got a really good message. It says, be kind and affectionate one to another. And here on the back, you can see this was the original that they based it off of. I like that it's like a pretty rainbow. I love the colors. And then I got um, the Sampler Girl Thanksgiving 1789 Pocket. And I'll be honest, I think this might be a freebie somewhere. I, I feel like I've, I've got this as a freebie, but I thought why not get the, the real pattern? Like a nice version of the pattern since it was, I think it was, well, it was $2.50, but it was on, I think it was 20% off on top of that. So, okay. And then the last thing I got, I was so excited. Like I always find, I mean, these are treasures that I found, but I often find like a treasure treasure where I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like one time at this store, I found the Primitive Needle Witch's Hollow for $5. That chart sells for over $100 all the time on eBay. I'm actually going to show you guys that because I worked on it this week. Um, but anyway, I found a treasure. I, I, I couldn't believe when I found this. I have this saved on my 123 Stitch wish list. I've had it saved for a while I've almost bought it several times and then I'm like ah, you know, it's, a, it's a really big project and and eh, you know like maybe someday I'm I'm so glad I never bought it because I found it at a at the craft box it's praiseworthy <laughs> praiseworthy stitches widow blacks B and B they have several of these Halloween scenes, and this is my favorite one. Widow Black's B&B &B is my favorite one. 
So I found the chart there and I was very excited. And then look, it includes the button pack, which by the way, the button pack said it was $21.50 just for the buttons. So I got the chart and the buttons for way less than that. This was, okay. This was a splurge for, for the pricing, like for the craft box and for what things usually cost. This was a splurge, but I did not bat an eye at paying $12.99 for this. But that is pricey for them. And it's because of this button pack. So that is what I got from the craft box. Um, yay. When am I going to stitch any of that? No, no time soon. No time soon. Um, okay. Let me show you my finishes. Let me show you one of my finishes that isn't fully finished. And it's not fully finished because it's a work in progress, but it is still a mini finish. I am stitching the Primitive Hair uh, Pagan Holiday Freebies. And I'm stitching them as the holidays fall. And um, I don't remember what day it was now. February, I don't remember when it was. February 4th or 5th or something was in bulk. I, I'm not a pagan. Like, I don't, I don't really know these things. Um, so... I, I stitched in bulk. I am stitching. There are eight of these. They're all free on her blog, Primitive Hair, if I didn't say that already. And I'm stitching them all in a wheel. And so it's still a whip until I get all eight done, but I do count them as like little mini finishes. However, they don't count towards finishes that I'm earning my new starts with, if that makes sense. Um, so here's in bulk. I can't tell if I'm in frame. Nope. Okay. There we go. This is linen that I tea and coffee dyed using Priscilla and Chelsea's method. And this is, I'll just kind of scroll by and let you see what I've already done. So I've done four. I've got four more left. I want but have not yet designed something. I want to design something for the middle because it's a wheel. So I'm gonna have this big open area in the middle and I want to design something, but I don't know what yet. But I'm thinking like a pentagram. I haven't decided. Okay, so that was a little finish. That wasn't really a finish, but was kind of a finish, so. All right, let me show you my fully finished. So I have, for the year, I have had three finishes and I finally fully finished those three. I have a rule that I have to have two finishes before I can have a new start. They don't have to be fully finished, but I have to finish two things before I can start a new project. So I'm calling it two for one or two steps forward, one step back. Basically, my whip count will continue to go down with this method, although it will go down slowly. So if I have 95 whips and I finish two of them, I now have 93 whips, but then I do get to have a new start. So now I have 94 whips. So my overall number will continue, will go down. And it's very motivating because I literally have to earn my new start. I I have, I'm going to show you some, some upcoming starts, like things I want to start, things I have kitted up and want to start, but I can't because I haven't earned them. And it's frustrating because I'm like, oh, I really want to stitch that. I'm like looking at this project, like I can't wait till I can stitch it. I can't wait. But then I'm like, you know what? I've got to, I've got to get another finish before I can start that. And so it's very motivating. It keeps, it keeps me working towards those finishes. Um, but 
I've, I've been a little cheat. I've cheated a little bit. Like I, it's not cheating, but like I've intentionally like picked like small projects that I know I can finish in a few days. So, um, that's, that's fine. It's not cheating, but I'm going to get to the point where I don't have any small projects and I'm going to have to finish some bigger things to earn my finishes for a new start. So anyway, I've finished three things. I've almost finished a fourth. So I've earned two new starts. I did have a new start on my birthday, which I'm going to show you. So I've used that. So now I've, um, I've got to finish one more thing and then I'll have earned a new start. But here's what I fully finished of my three finishes for the year. So the first one is my Stiach from the two, uh, they start, I think it started in like October or November. Um, so the 2018 Stiach along. Oh my, oh, okay. There was a little piece of hair and I'm like, oh, it's under the frame, but it wasn't, it was on the top. It was a little, a little link in hair. Um, so here is my, my finish. I have a tradition of doing tacky framing for my stiaches. So like, whoops. So like, I guys, trust me, I, I want it to look tacky. Okay. Like I look at this one. I, I intentionally found the tackiest frame I could. Freaking rhinestones from Hobby Lobby. So this isn't like artful framing. <laughs> So I got a big tacky silver frame. Um, this is, this behind is just scrapbook paper. Um, I mounted it on a flat board. I didn't use batting like I usually do. Um, and then I just glued it to the scrapbook paper and slipped it in the frame. And there we are. This was such a, a popular finish. I love it. The fabric is a little wabi-sabi, like it's a little wonky. So I didn't get it stretched very straight. And I kind of just accepted, like, I wasn't going to be able to stretch it straight because of the fabric. It just wasn't going to happen. So there's that. And then I finished a little kit from Cherish Stitches. This is, um, this was a kit called How Doth the Busy Bee, a pin pillow etui, etui, I can never say it, etui, etui. Etui. Um, came with everything except for like the stuffing. Like it didn't have stuffing in here, but it had every, it had the fabric and the ribbon and everything. And so I finished this, I finished the stitching and now I actually put the, I put it together. So it came with like the ribbon for the rosette and the little button came with this cording. It came with the fabric. So I stuffed it with like pellets so it's got some weight to it um and then scissor it's got a little pocket for scissors these scissors are too big and I can't see what I'm doing um these scissors are, are too big but if I get some smaller scissors they just fit right there in that pocket and then this can be like a pin cushion or whatever so cute got it gotta finish I was really proud of how well I did this pocket too. I think I nailed it. I do not like this trim. It unraveled and it's really fuzzy, which looks very worn and sloppy to me. I don't know if you guys can see it on my camera. I don't like it, but I liked everything else. I really like the fabric though. And then my third and final fully finished object is a pattern from Abby Rose called My Soul is Fed. And I stitched this on, like, I thought I had it in here. I think it's like a 36 count R&R. &R. I don't remember. I'll be honest. It's in my app. Um, so I stitched this, uh, oh, it's so cute. That's so cute. And I just finished, I just finished it with, uh, cotton fluff. What do you call it? Polyfill. Uh, this is velvet that I got in my, um, color and cotton Halloween box. Real nice. It just kind of went perfectly. And 
I'm debating maybe putting like some cording around, like maybe a rose colored cording. But after this disaster, I'm, I'm, I'm not real into that right now. So we'll see. Okay. So three fully finished objects. My screen grab. Three fully finished objects. Okay. So whips, 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 whips. When we spoke last, it was my birthday, January 29th. After my birthday, I started a new pattern, or the day of my birthday, I started <laughs> with Sarah Elliott, also known as Stitchology. Lincoln, no. He wants to go outside. Um, we So the pattern is called, ugh, it's called ugh. U-G-H, ugh. And it's by Samwise Simple Stitch on Etsy. And it's Scarlett O'Hara. And I rewatched Gone with the Wind while I was stitching this. And oh my God, that movie. I love that movie. But Scarlett and Rhett are the most horrible people on the planet. God, they're horrible. But she looks so fabulous. Like, through the whole movie. Like, oh my god. When when she gets caught in Ashley's arms and the town is scandalized. And then she has to go to um, his birthday party and face Melly. And everybody's like, yeah, she's going to kick her out and tell her what's what. And she doesn't. She's like, oh, Scarlett, thanks for coming. Because she's wonderful and delightful. Even though Scarlett's horrible. Melly is, Melly's amazing. Anyway, um, she shows up in that red dress with her hair done all beautiful. Actually, it's this. This is how her hair is done. And she shows up just looking so amazing. And Rhett ditches her. He, he walks her to the door and then he's like, bye, face this crowd on your own. It all works out in the end. Okay, you know what? What, blah 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 I'm just giving you a recap of Gone with the Wind now anyway she looks so good she looks so good in this movie even though she's a horrible person okay here's where I got on this one wow guys that skin whoo whoo it's a big I mean it's a big pattern it's bigger than it looks it's like 114 by 200 I still got so much skin left to do. Oh, there's her nose and her mouth or part of it. Anyway, uh, this is a mystery linen. It's like a 32 count dirty linen or something like that. Okay. These are in no order of what I worked of how I worked on them. I finally got back to my stocking. I have been putting it off. I have not been motivated to work on it. But I got back to it because the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, love that group, they have these challenges every week that make me grab whips that I might not have ever gotten to or wouldn't have gotten to in any timely manner. And they like motivate me to, to get to those whips. So anyway, I got back out my stocking, Dimensions, Santa's Flight. I had put it off of the last few Sundays. So I got it back out because one of the challenges was something that flies and it was sitting right next to me and I'm like, okay. And so here's where I'm at on it. I haven't done any back stitching, but it's starting to look like a Santa. I hate this Ada. It's super stiff and horrible. And then I got out, or not then, because like I said, this is in no order. Um, I got out Witch's Hollow by the Primitive Needle. This is my working copy, so it's sorry, it's a little beat up. Um, this is a big pattern. <laughs> this is a real big pattern. And I got this at the craft box for $5. I'm doing it with all the called four flosses on picture this plus murky 40 count 
and this fulfilled uh this met the the challenge several of the challenges like we had to stitch on um a night scene and stitch on uh something that's hard to find which is this pattern and stitch on something with grass so it fulfilled several of the this week's challenges so this is um this is my fabric and this is um i was stitching i stitched this all basically this whole section here the hill and that I started on the house um, but this is all that I had previously stitched I need to work on this more I love it okay and then um, one of the challenges was to stitch on something that you were enabled to buy or obtained from someone else and so I finally pulled back out Lady of the Flag because I was enabled with this pattern by Daphne Mama Metzger because I won this off of her floss tube. So she enabled me by sending me this pattern. And I'm doing a conversion to look like the colors of the Statue of Liberty. And I'm stitching this on the primitive hair. Um, it's a special fabric she dyed or created really specifically for this, although you could use it forever you want. It's called Constitution. It's 30 count linen. It's a big old piece of linen. So look, oh my God, this linen, it's huge. <laughs> but it's We the People linen. Um, but this is where I'm at. Working away on her dress. So that was fun to get that back out and put some, some love into that. Daphne and I have talked about doing, um, trying to work on this once a week, like a, a little sow. So I'm going to try to work on it more. I am. Um, and then I've been working on a pattern called, uh, by Little House Needleworks called Giving Thanks. So this will be my next finish. This will be my fourth finish where I earn a new start. Of course I picked it because it's little. This is on 36 count R&R &R linen winter brew with the called for flosses. I cut it a little close on this fabric. <laughs> and so yeah, I'm about halfway done. It's taking longer than I thought. I thought I could stitch it up in like a day or two. It's been like three, but I just have the top. I'm halfway done, but I think the top will go faster because the top is mostly words. So I do think that'll stitch up a little quicker. I'm hoping to finish that like today. Maybe I'll probably have to carry it into tomorrow, but I'm hoping to have a finish soon. So nice little project. Like I said, I'm trying to finish all my little things so I can get new starts. And then we had some snow last week. So I got out Mirabilia Snow Queen. I love this project. I do not get tired of it. I hope for snow because I love snow, but also because I want to get this out and work on it more. <laughs> so I, I'm happy when it snows and it's supposed to snow Monday, I think. So I hope I get it back out. Okay. So here's where I'm at. Oh, it's so pretty. It's the fabric is hand dyed by Stephanie. 32 count polywog princess and I'm using all the called for stuff and everything that's stitched here is like all everything is stitched except for the beads so like any gaps or holes you see are where beads are gonna go so um oh those antlers took forever they took longer than they look I added in some sparkly crinic I don't know if you can see it it's that green So there we are. I have the reindeer almost done. This is like, I've got some, some right here, some belly right here. And then we're in, then we're in dress and this is all dress. So I got to finish this, um, this leg. There's some like snow and then dress. Then we're, then we're on to the lady. So fun to stitch. It's so pretty. I love it. I love it. All right, that is all I worked on. So what is next for me? I'm so, I'm, I've almost earned another new start. I'm so excited. I'm very frustrated though, because I want to start so many things and I can only do one. And so 
I think what I'm going to start is Stacy Nash Cherry Hollow Farm Sampler. This seems to be the one that is calling to me the most. And this is a kit. It was a Nashville kit a couple years ago. So I think that's what I'm going to start. But I also, I mean, so many things are calling to me. I, you know, this, this Jardin Privé Marquise is calling to me. This Plum Street, Mrs. Bingley's Library is really calling to me. I almost picked this one instead of the Cherry Hollow Farm. Um, also calling to me is the Primitive Hair, the Old Winter calling calling to me and then this Kathy Barrick Sunflower Farm those are all kitted up ready to start I so I'm thinking Cherry Hollow Farm I'm thinking this is my next start unless you all can convince me otherwise if you feel like I really need to start one of those other ones and you have a re really good reason let me know let me know I could be persuaded I could um, all right that's all I've got thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye, everybody.